So for me, oftentimes my best stuff is uh, the stuff that I poach back for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it is for you. I feel like Aaron was politely listening and he was like, okay, just ex explain the word poach to me. I got all of that, but the word poach is a new one. <laughs> Hello there, people. My name is Comedian. The people on the screen, if you didn't know, it'd be weird if you didn't know, but just in case, is RM, Mr. RM, Mr. Pharrell. Uh, they're going to talk about Lord knows what, I'm not sure, but although they have an upcoming collab. That's what they're talking about. But they spend 23 minutes talking about it, which is cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm hoping to see another like bromance uh, between these two guys because 23 minutes is quite a long interview. Uh, it's pretty cool. And also, I just noticed. I thought, I thought Pharrell was wearing like, you know, Pharrell's pretty famous for his like outlandish outfits. He's kind of like the male Lady Gaga in that sense. But RM's actually giving him a good run for his money. His suit is pretty conventional, but he's actually wearing like Spider-Man boots, like Spider-Man's boots as taken over by Venom from Spider-Man Three. Pharrell is wearing, he's, he's a nudist who decided he wants to cover up his torso and his legs uh, with, with leather. And he's looking so slippery and shiny that if this man sneezes, I think his jacket and his boots will fly off at 100 miles an hour and he'll be naked. So I'm hoping that's going to happen, obviously. But anyway, uh, if you're as confused as I am about what I just said, make sure you subscribe. It's the only way to make the pain go away. And let's watch this. I'm not sure if you, if you remember it or not, but we've, we've met at um of course billboard music awards yes of in course. 2018. it's so this whole video is going to be in english isn't it that's really weird that's like mind boning me right now that's confusing i was literally searching for this i was like the subtitles buttons grayed out what what do i do it's great weird yeah, do you we remember took, yeah we took a photo <laughs> we took a photo i wanted to work then <laughs> That's so cute. I love Aryan being like, you probably don't remember, but I, we met before. Because <laughs> it would have been awkward if Pharrell was like, I don't remember. Who are you? Next. First of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for having thank me you for as well. Having me as well. Uh, you know, I think that there's a huge benefit in writing and producing for other people. I'm mm. pretty sure you may feel that way as well, but it allows me to um, go to places that I wouldn't go mm. for myself. And as much as it feels like, you know, I may know what I'm doing when I'm doing songs that I'm, you know, uh, featured as a solo artist. Uh, some people know, but most people don't know that all of my solo efforts have always been songs that I have written and produced for other people. In fact, when I try to write songs for myself or produce songs for myself, they always are too complex and seem much more like a puzzle mm -hmm. than they do. That's pretty interesting. So he's saying, he's saying that what? So he writes a song with somebody else and it doesn't end up working out. So he decides to release it himself and that's how his solo releases work. But if he tries to make his songs for himself, they're too complex. It is kind of curious though. It makes you wonder if it's like one of those like things where you feel more comfortable in the company of other people or something. So, or like you feel more accepted. So like maybe like if you're around friends, you'll modify your personality just slightly, but because they're with you and laughing, you feel like better about it. But Maybe it's like, you know, diluting his creativity a little bit. I want to kind of be like, let the public decide. You're famous now. Release one of these like obscenely complex, you know, songs and maybe it'll be a masterpiece. Maybe we'll be like, don't hold back. That's actually perfect. It's just, you know, sometimes the best creative stuff is the stuff that seems the most convoluted or it's the stuff that you make and you, you get afraid of it. You're like, ah, oh, that, that's too much. That's too much like me. That's too personal. But actually that's the stuff that is the most interesting to other people. It's very interesting to hear a huge artist talk about that, though. It's, it's really, really Do, fascinating. Um, you know, a jam, you know, like right. a bop. But I do those for other people. So for me, oftentimes, my best stuff is uh, the stuff that I'm <laughs> glad to hear it, Zayna. Oh, what he's talking about. He's actually, wait, wait, what is he saying? You know, like right. a bop. But I do those for other people. So for me, oftentimes, my best stuff is uh, the stuff that I poach back for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it is for you. In 2005, uh, 2005, I was... I feel like, I feel like RM was politely listening and he was like, okay, just ex explain the word poach to me. I got all of that, but the word poach is a new one. Just an elementary school kid. Mm. And I just wanted to be a rapper. As I um, get to, got to know what's rap, it's, you know, basically it's rhythm and poetry. I really f f felt attracted for this whole genre to, you know, send the messages to the world. Actually, it's really, um, 
you know, embarrassing to um, answer about all this in front of um, my um, idol. But <laughs> for me, it's um, for me, it's it's really it's really more comfy to you know. Mostly for me, I I, I write somebody's lyrics or or the melodies yeah. for 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 other artists. Yeah. Not ma- as many as you, but it feels <laughs> like you know. Stays humble. Your avatars and characters. Yes. Yes. So so when when it comes to me, yeah. um, it's a complex, and it's it always comes with the pain, you know, to to confess. Mm. But it's still um the most important part for me. I can relate to that. I think uh, the pain part for me is probably the fun part because that like mm-hmm. that's like some of the most vivid paint mm-hmm. that we can use as art. The pain part is the fun part, as in masochist. You heard it here fun first. Part, cause that, like, mm-hmm. That's like some of the most vivid paint mm-hmm. that we can use as artists when we're like filling in what we want to be a, a power, powerful verse. It's like, okay, does it hurt enough? Mm. You know, or does it feel good enough? Mm. You know, um, True. so I, I understand you there when you say, you know, you know, you, you, you inject the pain in your verses to make sure that it's like, right. you know, they're strong. Uh-huh. I agree. I was wondering the you know, creative process, you know, how it's different for you yourself, like in my mind or, or girl, or, you know, between the, you know, songs you made for, for the others, like the singers or the rappers or like clips, mm-hmm. um, grinding, of course. Mm-hmm. I just wonder the difference, you know, from the, from the scratch. So when an artist walks in, they ask for something. Like a track or a you know, idea? they'll say, you know, I, you know, I just want something hard, or I want something darker, or I want, you know, the, you know, something that's like for the club, like, you know. Like, and this, this this almost feels like it should be illegal. Like this is quite a fascinating look at the music industry, which I feel like I don't know if it's like shied away from it, but the music industry is never exactly like, hey, you know, this artist, most of their stuff is collaborative. Like all of their stuff is a team of people. You know, like Britney Spears, like, you know, a lot of her lyrics are written by someone else. Like, you know, all these famous artists, I feel like it was almost like a well-kept secret or just something that's not talked about. It's quite fascinating to hear these big artists openly talking about the idea of ghostwriting, producing, all that stuff. Banger, you know what I'm saying? A banger, Mm. like, and so I'm considering what they're looking for, Mm. but I'm also thinking about like the texture of their voice and and the and the patterns and the melodies that they do usually then i think about um how i can give them something very diff- different than they've ever done before mm-hmm. and so when you mix all of that together <laughs> shit um, hearing i mean obviously they're huge artists but hearing him talk about music you're just like oh my god oh, they're musical geniuses he's thinking about voice texture i didn't know that was a thing you know an artist will say man that's a little different for me or whatever mm-hmm. and then i'll go ahead and reference it and you know sell it sell it to someone else and then oh. like oftentimes that same person will come back to me and say man why didn't you play me that and i'll like, <laughs> i did play you that but they weren't hearing it in that way wow that's a fun part yeah that's mm. a fun part but then there are people who who jump out the window and they go ahead and try it because mm. my whole thing is just try it we don't have to put it out right but <laughs> i am hyper focused so good at what they do sometimes it's fascinating also the audio is a bit quiet so i'm, I'm like i'm like but you know, people are so good at what they do. Sometimes they're afraid to explore different parts of their voice. That's a human experience right there. Mm. Different parts of their being growing. Getting comfortable with getting comfortable with what you know and what you're good at and being afraid to try new things. I think the older you get, the more you can be kind of like, you feel it's almost like, um, uh, like the sunk cost fallacy where you're like, well, I spent so much time getting good at this thing. I'm now afraid to try something new. No, they're a little like hesitant, but for the ones that do try it, they get to experience something new. And look, if we've decided at the end of the day, it's just not right for them, it's not right for them. Right. But you got to hear a different side. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite part of writing and producing for other like people. Like a challenge. I'm just imagining Pharrell comes in, you know, and like Adele's like, I need a new song. And he's like, how do you feel about heavy metal? Uh, you know, dark, dark math rock, because I've got some shit here. Okay. Okay. It'll blow your brains out. I started, I started to listen to music, I mean, like the hip hop music mm-hmm. in, in, in 2005, I started with the Nas and Eminem, okay. of course, the classics. Yeah. But, you know, as I get to know you, when I, when I first listened to your song, 
especially I just want to point out Take It Off. Yeah. Because that's my um that's my playlist, one of the playlists. Whoa. So that's crazy. When I when I listen to it, <laughs> I just I even I even wrote I even translated into Korean and I just just recorded once when I was in <laughs> someone in my chat. Aaron just said, "His skin is so flawless." That's like which one of them? You could be talking about either of them here. I'm amateur, Whoa. so so you know when I listen to it, I just always been wanting to have the you know frequency, like you know because you always cross over this. These days, genre doesn't mean anything, but I think at that time, I think was like you know some some rappers really criticize the rappers who sing or or yeah. use the auto tunes. Right. But I don't know. You started. Your career as a as a producer, or so you're like very um natural for that. But I always um wanted to have the frequency like you, like you know. It, it sometimes it's just singing. It could be falsetto. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes you rap. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes you just you just you just sing the hook yeah. for for the audio artist, yeah. like some dog. And so um, how how do you position yourself when you um when you when you partic participate in the song as, as a player? Like, wow. First of all, these are great questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and no one's ever asked me that, believe oh, really? it or not. Like, no, I've never had a journalist ever ask that me that. That really matters me to me. Um, so. Take notes, journalists. No, that's like, no cap, like you, believe it or not, no one's, and, and it sounds like I, they could have, and it could have such an obvious question, but no one's ever asked me that. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm so happy. Everything, I make decisions based off of feeling. Oh. I don't make them com based off of um, convention. I gotta rap, I gotta sing. Yeah, I no, gotta... it's, just, it's just whatever it feels like it needs. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna channel it as best as I can because I'm trying to tell somebody else who's gonna be better than me mm -hmm. to do it. And oftentimes, what will happen was people, artists will be like, "Nah." I like that there's this really deep, lovely discussion happening on screen, and also in my chat, people are talking about music and opening your brain. You know, similar and different things, which is good. And it is good to open your mind and to you know experience new genres. And I try, you know, I used to be very, very set in my ways or like i used to have this like i used to have this weird thing where i'd really like sharing music but i was scared to receive music which looking back almost sounds a bit like narcissistic or you know, maybe maybe poor role models growing up i don't know but like i, I you know I, I my favorite thing was like sharing music with somebody and having them be like oh i like this you know um but if somebody shared music back i'd assume like oh i probably won't like this or i'd get in my head you know that this weird mental block where i like wouldn't be able to listen to it like you know in a fair in a fair manner with like actually open eyes or is uh, and this is I think one of the things I really like about this channel is that it's helped me open my uh, you know open my mind a lot musically uh, and and in other ways um, you know because I feel like I feel like it's this like weird thing you get you know society loves drawing up lines and, and humanity loves like making ridiculous arbitrary things where it's like oh I like this I'm part of this group I remember as a kid like um, I, I think part of the reason I got into metal as a genre was because a lot of my friends were into it and they were cool and I wanted to relate to them and it, you know it did actually speak to me in my teenage angst you know it did actually genuinely like it for itself but part of the reason I got into it was because I was like you know I want to be part of this group that's like enjoying this thing um, but then the sad thing of that is you also you know have friends who are like ugh EDM is ridiculous they can't even play real instruments or like that kind of mindset or like rap isn't real music and it's sad you know and you take on these like these these negative like stereotypes from other people and it closes your own mind like i remember like i remember as a kid like hearing songs and thinking deep down being like i like this but on the surface being like i'm not allowed to like this it's not the right genre and it's really really sad to like have that kind of uh narrow-mindedness like baked into your kind of persona so i'm really glad like to have like shaken like that off or be shaking that off uh and you know it's cool to be the kind of person who's gone from being like only metal is okay, EDM's not music, to like mostly listen to like EDM and, and K-pops <laughs> and rap as well. I want you to stay on there, and I'd be like, no, but it's for this person. But I channel what I feel like is missing, mm -hmm. and I and I forget that it's going to be. People in my Mama Lamas politely said, it's a, maybe it's my fear of offending someone if I don't like it." That's that's nice of you, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if I was sitting there being like, "Oh, I'm worried I won't like it." and I'll upset them. I th I'm, I'm, I'm worried I was actually like, this is gonna be crap, this person's an idiot. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm not like that anymore. Like if someone sends me music, I try and listen to it open-mindedly and enjoy it. You know, cause it's like, I'm the same with movies. I used to be like, you know, I got to this period where I was like, I'm only gonna watch a movie. It has to have like above 90% Rotten Tomatoes, which is ridiculous. 
And although, like, I mostly agree with critics on movies, like, most of the time, there's definitely times I completely do not agree with them at all. So you're you're closing your mind off to stuff that you might enjoy, uh, for example. Um, but it's also, it also, you're, like, forgetting that something doesn't have to be a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 to be worth enjoying. I'll, I enjoy cheese. It's, a, you know, a 6 out of 10 any day of the week. You know, that, that's fine. And sometimes... I don't know why I'm making a weird cheese metaphor for movies when movies are fine by themselves to talk about. But sometimes, you know, you're in a certain mood where you're like, I had a crap day. I want to have a crap cheese or a crap movie. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm glad I'm, I'm, I've am i kind of like removed myself from that mindset of like, you know, everything must be perfect. It's just like not a way to live. I channel what I feel like is missing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I forget that it's going to be me because if I think that it's going to be me, then it won't be as good and I won't be as confident. Mm -hmm. I'm only confident knowing that I am giving the instruction and the directives to someone else. Like, for example, mm. there's a record that I did with um, Mystical a long time ago. Called Mystical. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sh shake your ass. Right. Ooh. So when I did that record, I was thinking like, you know, writing wise, you know, Chad and I produced it together. But when I was um, when I was writing that hook, I was pretending that like Eddie Kendricks from The Temptations uh, could do it. And I remember saying to them, oh man, you know, we're gonna get like, you know, we're gonna get, um, you know, the guy from the, you know, The Temptations to do it. And they were like, nah, we, no, we, the record company wants you to stay on there. I was, oh. like, I was like, wait, what? So it was like this weird thing where like, I started to realize that was my sweet spot is when I channel other people oh. and I surrender to what the music needs and not let my ego or my feelings get involved. And then I actually make better decisions where there's going to be me on the song at the end of the day or, or not an artist or another artist. Mm. I've given I filled in. So interesting hearing talk about this, because at first I was like, if you take it quite, if you take it literally, you hear a man saying like, you know, when I was writing this song, I realized, you know, I was like, I had an idea of who I wanted to sing this hook. Uh, and I wrote this hook and, but they said, oh, we can't get that person on this. It's going to be you. And it ended up working out. So, and he, and so, you know, so I realized it actually works better on my channel other people. And it almost, and, uh, like when I took it at face value, I was like, wait, is he saying he feels like he's a better artist when he like does, basically does impersonations? But that's not what he's saying at all. Because I suddenly related it to like the kind of art I do collaboratively, uh, you know, which is improv. I do a lot of improv comedy. Um, and that's something I realized, I think within the first year of doing improv, which was like, when you let go of your ego and when you realize you can make something way better collaboratively than by trying to like steal the stage or trying to like be like, here's my joke or here's my line. Here's where I want the scene to go. Like when you actually listen more, when you open your mind to other people, when you let it become a part of a whole, it's way, way better. If you think you have this like 10 out of 10 one line, a killer joke you could you could drop in a in an improv scene, but it doesn't actually serve as a scene at all. Then that joke is guaranteed to be half as funny, half as good as a joke that could happen two lines in the future when you listen to someone else, when you play off somebody else, and when you pay off something together. You talk about a topic, and the audience knows your giant. The, you know the audience can see the energy between you. They can see that you're you know you're jamming. Then that joke, which was a ten out of ten earlier. If you, if you if you know you hold it back and you actually talk to the other person, the next joke that comes out is going to be a twenty out of ten. Like it's so true what he's saying. Like uh, when you're working in a collaborative, creative environment, you really have to let go of your ego and to stop thinking about the I and to think about the we instead. In the blank and, and giving them a different feeling. Mm. And oftentimes, sometimes I would be sharp, you know, when I'm yeah, singing on there, mm. but it just felt good, and we would just leave it. So I'm not sure if you. If you remember it or not, but we've we've met at um so cute Billboard Music Awards yes, in two thousand eighteen. Yeah, do you remember? Took, yeah, we took a photo. <laughs> we took a photo. Together. I wanted to work then, <laughs> but I didn't. You know, I didn't want to like I didn't want to like you know be aggressive. So I was like, oh, so, no, let's just okay. take a photo. But you, you but, were nice. But I really yeah. wanted. To, I was like, yo, let's leave. I think we took a photo backstage yeah backstage in your room actually yeah mm -hmm. and then like i was working in a studio not too far off and i really wanted to be like yo fuck 
all of this. Like, you know what? Let me not. Let me correct this because I don't want your fan base to be mad at me yeah. using, using well, this kind of language. Um, no, but not man, I was like, man, I wanted to be like, listen, let's leave here right now mm. and go make some great music because I just loved Ooh. everything that you guys were doing. I just, I love your energy. This video is amazing. I love it. It's great. I, I sort of knew it as well when I saw it was an interview between these two characters. And it's 24 minutes long, which is already, you know, you know, quick pick into the editing world. Guarantee that even just, even if you ignore the lines they didn't cut out, if you just take all these lines, I'm sure there's way more lines they cut out. Like this would have been delivered over like 30 minutes. That's just how editing works. Like then, you know, to the point, like you can just tell, I could tell by looking at the runtime of this video. I was like, these guys probably had great chemistry. Like I could just, I got a sense looking at the runtime of the video, that it was going to be a great interview. And it's really, really good. It's a really good video. Mm -hmm. You know, I love what it is that you represent, you know, at such a time when, you know, our Asian brothers and sisters and, you know, um, fellow Asian human beings that maybe not, maybe don't identify necessarily binarily uh, in a binary way, you know, the Asian um, community has just been going through so much. These days, yeah. And, uh, you Gradually, know, more and more. Um, the Asian community has given me so much. And I really feel like y'all's energy, you're also showing like artists, period, not, period, not just like in different, not just in one specific genre, but I think you're just like also showing people that like, you don't have to be, you can be humble. Mm -hmm. You you guys, your energy is very, there's a lot of humility that you all vibrate. I think that's a great energy. What people don't realize is like, like when you have, but yeah, he's right though, right on the money. Like that is 100% one of the things you say about BTS. If it was like Jeopardy or whatever, it'd be like, give me humble. And it would be like ding right at the top. That's definitely part of their success is because they're relatable because they're actually like very human and normal. Energy. What people don't realize is like when you have, you know, literally, you know, hundreds of millions of fans mm -hmm. and you encounter them you know, 20 and 50 and 100,000 at a time. Can't notice a single face, you know? It's, mm -hmm. it's, just, a, Man. it's just a mess. It, 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 yeah, a it's- M-A-S, it's not a-, not a yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a mass. It's a mass. And, yeah. and it is a massive voice, and mm -hmm. it is a massive, using that word mass, it is a massive energy mm -hmm. coming at you. And you say jump. And, and then they and, jump. And they jump. And you sing, and they sing every word. Right. And you know that you can feel through their voices that so many of their lives have been affected and changed because of something that you've done. Mm -hmm. That's what I, don't I know how you, believe. I don't know how you do that because I've had a couple songs do that and then when I get out there and go sing it, that, that would make me cry because it was too much of a responsibility. Every time I get that close to that size and, and what I do as a musician, I always step back. Oh, why? It's like, is, it's, it, is it too heavy? It's, like it's too heavy, too man. Much. It's too much of a responsibility. That's why mm. I really revere people like you. That's so interesting. I'm guessing part of the reason that BTS, it's easier for them to handle it or something, it's less intense, is because there's seven of them. They can spread that energy out evenly between seven people. If for like if Pharrell's on stage, uh, the same kind of energy being aimed at him, it might be a little bit more intense, you know? I guess a bit metaphor for it is probably like uh, in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie when, you know, if one person held the Infinity Stone in their hands, they'd explode into a thousand pieces. But when, this, you know, when the group comes together and holds it, they can just about stay alive. BTS is literally on stage like, <clears throat> the, you know, the audience is the Infinity Stone trying to blow them up with screams. <laughs> and, they, and the seven of them are holding hands on stage bracing. Yourself and, you know, your, your, your band members and other artists like B and J and like, man, what y'all go out there and go face every night on that stage. It is, it is humbling and it's overwhelming. And sometimes your nervous system got to be built for that. Of course. Let me ask you this. How do you deal after you come off the stage feeling electrified and shocked every night? How do you, how do you, how do you decompress or do you decompress? Champagne. Purge. I'll answer that. Champagne. It's, you know, it, it I, I, um, my first performing was um, in front of like 10 people in some small clubs when I was like 15. Okay. And um, 
I like forgot like, all most of the lyrics. So at that time, I just realized that oh, I'm not a you know I'm not a star type. I'm not a you know like a mm -hmm. like these like a front man and you know could enjoy all this shit and just you know it's like 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 Kurt Cobain or yeah, or yeah. Mick Jagger. I'm not that type. Of, I'm just a human just who loves writes writing music and just you know uh, the energy. So yeah. every night, um, like for example, we had um. He said in shows in Las Vegas last April. Yeah. It was four. But like every night is a is a challenge. It's like same set list. Um, yeah. um, you know, it's like maybe the same flow, sort of type, little different. But mm -hmm. um just like you said, that moment, like after we finished the first three beginning songs, and then we, you know, take out the earphones. Yeah. And then like, we just like. We're f yeah. <laughs> we're fucking back. It's like that's like everybody yeah. shouting out. At that moment, you know, that's when I really um gets all, all the nerves um and like you know it's a there, there's a different different me persona for for the for the next two hours and a half. But but before that, from the rehearsal and even in the plane, I got really like really nervous and you know like so responsible because I like. I really am aware of the stories that you know fans buy the tickets and they come from Brazil, you know, from Japan, Korea, like from everywhere. They just come there. This is why I like BTS. I mean, it, it's, it seems like a, a sadly low bar, but like there is a there's a lot of creative people out there that are messed up in various ways. I'd say most creative people are messed up in some ways, but some creative people are messed up in ways where they don't have their empathy or they're mean or they're, you know, or they're like really egotistical. They're like crazy narcissists. BTS just seems so normal. It's so nice to hear that. Well, it's sweet that they're on the plane being like, oh, other people are flying out for this concert. We've got to make it good for them. Like they're paying all this money and flying out like, uh, there's there's artists out there who don't give a shit about that. There's artists out there who do not care about that at all. Who like who, who would laugh if you told them like the con like you know, and it, it's 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 crazy how even just like the tiniest bit of fame can take some people that were kind of like more on, on let's say like centrist morally. Let's you know let's say you have people who are like really mean and people have really nice and some people are in kind of in the middle. The sort of ones that like never really you know wouldn't go out of their way to be dicks, but then like sometimes those people if you give them a little bit of fame, a little bit of recognition. They can sort of just mutate and kind of become dicks. Um, you know, like absolute power corrupts absolutely, fame is a mask eats into the face. There's all these phrases that deal with that. Um, and it's crazy these guys have as much fame as they do and they're still on the plane thinking, oh, I just gotta, yeah, I gotta perform well tonight. There's people coming out to see us from all over the world. Like, it's really sweet. For, their, for just that one night. So it feels me like I have to pay back, you know? I have to give them. I have to offer them the best night ever in their lives. So it's a, it's a, it's a mess, and it's a it's a too much energy. But um, I'm a human, and I really get nervous, and I really sometimes get depressed by, and even you know get swallowed by all the energies. But I'm trying, and I'm I'm I try to deal with it because I'm a human, and I love the music. I love their love because you know I think. Love is really happening when we give somebody, mm. not we we, we receive. Take, receive. Yeah, we take. Yeah. So I think it's more closer closer to the real love, I guess, personally. So I just want to give them give them back. You know, they um, brought us from you know just a small city in Korea all the way back to you know this the heart of this music industry, like yeah. Las Vegas, L.A., New York. You know, me having an interview with Pharrell. It, it, it could happen because of, you know, fans all over the world. I'm just always grateful and I just don't want to disappoint them. How do you define, how do you position yourself? Like, you know, you're a producer, mm -hmm. you may be a rapper, you may be a singer, yeah. maybe a CEO, yeah. um, father, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a husband. Yeah. Like, what's, what's um, like, you know, I'm for, of course, the, the, the name Pharrell explains everything, but like, you know, it, like, it's, Accept that. How do you? How how will you define yourself? Like, um, I don't know. I mean, that's an intense question. I like it. I'm a public servant first. Public servant. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that word. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I, you know, when you serve the public, you know, you're doing um, 
That's what something that's, for that's, public. Yeah, and that's mm. that's God's will. I'm a believer. I am a believer. Yeah, I uh, believe. You know, the universe is real. Um, <laughs> for me, God is the universe. Mm -hmm. We're in the universe. Um, and then you know, again, you know, being a public servant, you know, being, you know, a father, a husband. Um, and then music is like everything for me because music's the, the skeleton key that's opened up every door. Still, for me to, still yeah. music. Is. Yeah, it's mm. like the center of everything because without that, I wasn't able to do all the stuff that I'm able to do. And then I definitely have my struggles with having a, a lack of a sense of purpose, I think. Mm -hmm. um, when? Like, uh, right around 2005, when I put out In My Mind. In My Mind. I just felt like, After man, that? Right after that? Uh, I, as soon as it didn't do what I wanted it to do. I mean, culturally, mm -hmm. it, it made an impression, but it didn't do it um, egotistically. It didn't perform the way I wanted it to, Charles. Oh. Like, it just didn't do what I was used to at that time, and that really hit me hard. So that made me start to think about, like... That's also, you know, a real thing, like... Um, it, it's something I struggle with with my channel. Like I, I feel more and more like, you know, like the more my channel kind of just like stays the same, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Like I'm stuck in the mud. Like, and but even though other people could look at my channel and be like, oh, you got all the, you know, you got this many subscribers. You have like, you know, you have some patrons. You got like all these nice comments. Or like when I started at my channel. If I could see what I'm doing now, I'd be like, oh, amazing. It's working out. It's going well. But the fact that it hasn't changed in like a year, like you get these standards and it starts making you think like, what am I doing wrong? Or like, I think the, I think the problem is as humans, we feel like we, we always seem to feel like we're moving forwards. So if you do feel like you're kind of stuck in one place that even if technically what the place you're stuck in is objectively a good place to be in, it, it somehow like, you know, it's that fulfillment goes away. Like the anxiety sets in. Like I've I've seriously been struggling with like the thought of like you know do I just give all this up, like or like you know how many more years of of doing this and it not really going anywhere else, like can I do before I have to be like you know this is irresponsible I'm a human being I'm a member of society I I should go back to work, you know, like uh, it's uh, but you know like he's probably talking about an album that probably sold really well made loads of money but he had this idea of how he wanted it to do and it didn't hit that. So it might sound, you know, so from the outside, you might be like, well, that's just like selfish and crazy. But I understand that entirely. Like it's, um, you know, you want to feel like, you know, you're always moving, you're always going to, an, you know, in a new direction. Uh, and you can kind of, you know, as humans, even though sometimes you'd think being in the same place would be like the most reassuring and actually be the most scary thing to be like constantly in the same place. It's weird. Humans are strange. Listen, things having real true DNA and not just aesthetic perversion, mm. but like real true like meaning uh and something that could be <laughs> yeah i noticed i noticed the awkward atheist laugh too i was like i don't think this guy's religious but you know when he said for me god is the universe like i can you know i can respect that i understand spirituality more now like i'm not i don't believe in god but you know like i, I have i don't completely reject the idea of spirituality anymore um and, and, you know, I, I respect somebody saying God is the universe. Like, maybe that's just a different way of describing your relation to to life and all things in it, you know. Meaningful to people, but at the same time still fun. And, you know, I've always loved a girl, so <laughs> that was always going to be a part of it. But um, so I understand what that is. I know what it's like to hit that part, that place in your career. Mm. Uh, and for whatever reason, and, and you guys are doing fine, but I think, you know, from what I'm hearing and what I'm understanding, uh, you guys hit a you hit a place where you were like, you know, what are we doing? Mm. Who are we? Are we who we said we were? Right. You know, um, and, and you know, as you think about who you are and you think about what you mean and what your intentions are, it's like also kind of determining who you want to be. Um, I mean, how's that, how's that feel? Like, wh where are you in that process right now? Because you're working on a solo record, right? Yes, like 90% of the work is done. Okay. I've, I've released some mixtape as a, you know, one of the member of the band, but I think it was just a, like a, like an experiment. I think this time it's my, maybe like, maybe my official first solo album. Okay. That's mm -hmm. exciting. That I could feel enough. Okay. I don't know it's gonna be like, um, I, I don't know it's, if I if I would feel like you after my mind or not, but I right. think you know it'll happen after after when I release it. Yeah. So I just I'm just dependent on on, on the time. But um, it's been just like ten years after 
we had our debut um, as a team. So, you know, K-pop is, you know, all about the all about the band and the groups. And actually, I told you, I personally started my career as a as a as a rapper mm -hmm. uh -huh, and as a poet. Yeah. So um, that that's that was a tricky part actually because, you know, um, the K-pop is like a, is like a mix. Yeah. It's like the mix of American pop music, all the visuals and the choreos and and social medias and stuff. It's really intense and really hectic. So it has some pros and cons of its own. So, you know, after 10 years, I think um, it was not our intention, but we, we took it. But we actually became a sort of a social figure. So, you know, a K-pop band going to have a, uh, have a speech at the UN or, you know, meeting the presidents. It's like, I'm, I really, I, I think I was really confused that I'm a, like a, what, what am I, like a diplomat or what? So <laughs> yeah. I, I was just a, like a, you know, a small, small rapper and lyricist um, when I was young, yeah. like from the scratch. So, um, so it was ten years, really intense as a team, uh, and um, I actually was in charge, like almost all, all of the interviews, and um, you know, representing the team, like in front of the other members. That was my that was my stuff, I guess. Role. Yeah. So, um, I think I got really um. Um, I don't know, like, yo, I gotta, I gotta stop, I gotta stop this for a, for a bit. Yeah. I gotta shut it down and just, you know, fall from away, fall, if, uh, fall from it away, and then just see what's going on. You know, making my mind really um, calm down. Yeah. And then I think so. That's how I um, got to concentrate on my just, just solo. And I, these days, I really have been thinking about the, the 15 when I, when I first listened to you. You know, the first. Um, feeling and the vibe and the reason why I started, what I why I chose music to yeah. you know for my whole life, I guess. So um, yeah, when I was when I was when I started my music, I was like 14, and now I'm like 28. So it's like just the half. It's like yeah. you know, it's like short, way short. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am absorbed. I stopped reacting for a second. Yeah, he's expressing a lot of deep stuff. Uh, and yeah, it is nice to hear. Him, it is nice to hear him call himself a poet. He is a poet. Like that's you know, rap is poetry. Bad rap is bad poetry. Good rap is good poetry. Great rap is great poetry. RM makes great rap. You know, like it's as simple as that. Like his wordplay. You know, I've said this before in other reactions. You know, it, it, it always blows my mind how his wordplay is so good that it can blow my mind translated. Like you know something. Somebody has latched onto a universal truth. They're speaking in you know deep meaningful powerful ways when you can translate it to a different language and even though you lose like half of the sparkle on top the core meaning still blows you away you know even without the sparkle like it, it is crazy like that's that's real talent better than you would um so i'm in that process so it's really tricky and confusing and i just don't know what's going to happen um so any if you could give me any advice, it's because you were in the band, and you are in the band, mm -hmm. and you've you done the best. It's, it's different from the K-pop, but you, 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 you've done a lot of projects, like, of course, NERD, um, Neptunes, yeah. and, you know, of course, your solo. Yeah. So, um, like, any any thoughts about... Um, you know, being, being in the Neptunes, being in NERD, and having a solo record really helped me because and it, it, you know, you do one thing, then you take a break. You do another thing, then you take a break. You mm -hmm. do another thing, then you take modes. a break. Switch modes. Yeah, and, and it allows me to like put on different hats and put on different mm -hmm. masks. Um, so I understand that. Uh, and I, I know like having that departure is gonna make it really fresh for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's good for you to do that because then when you come back to it, you know, to the, to the to group. The team. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be, yeah, to the team, I think it's going to be super fresh and you have a whole lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. I would just say continue to move forward, continue to be curious, mm -hmm. um, and don't put any kind of necessary pressure on what it is that you do by saying, you know, no absolutes, like, oh, I will never do music again, mm -hmm. or I will never, I, I wouldn't do any of that. I would just. Mm -hmm. No nevers. Say, no nevers, mm -hmm. just stay along for the ride. Just mm -hmm. keep going. Like cruising. Yeah, and mm -hmm. just see where you end up, because it's really interesting. Thank you. No, thank it you. It was a bless. Pleasure's mine. Oh, that was great.
Wow. I could tell. I could tell from the thumbnail and the and the runtime. I was like, this is going to be a banger. Two musicians talking for twenty four minutes. They they definitely clicked. They edited it down to twenty four minutes like that. These guys clicked and they did hardcore. Like it was really really cool. It's so nice to see people like from two very different walks of life. I guess in a certain way, I guess, you know, culturally different walks of life, musically, they might actually be quite similar, I suppose. But, you know, at least, you know, at the face of it, different walks of life, you can, you know, they they just, you could just tell, like, they look at each other and they're like, I understand you. It's, you know, it's nice when you meet someone uh, that you don't think you're going to get on with and then suddenly you realize, actually, shit, we are the same person. Like, you, you see past all this other bullshit and you're like, we actually are the same person. Brilliant. Let's hang out. Let's talk about that. How are you doing, me? Uh, it's really, you know, really, really nice. And they're both very, very intelligent, creative geniuses. Like, really, really fascinating to hear their insight into the music industry. Because, like I said, it's kind of a secretive, exploitative, slightly abusive industry. Like, you know, they talked about a lot of stuff that you don't hear artists talk about very often. Like, you know, collaborating, ghostwriting, working with different projects. Uh, it was really cute to see RM fanboying over Pharrell and Pharrell to be like, you're asking me questions that, you know, no one else has thought of. Like, it was just really, really wholesome. I really enjoyed that video. Um, parts of it I talked a lot. Parts of it I was just like, but hopefully uh, that was a fun reaction. I had a lot of fun making it. So thank you guys for watching. And if you liked the video and you want to support my channel, then you can subscribe to my channel, of course. Button's down there. You can also check out my Patreon. Uh, I've got Run BTS and Bon Voyage reactions on there and early access to all my videos and weekly polls so you can pick more content like this. This was a Patreon for Thursday's video, I just remembered, wasn't it? Or was it? No, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I don't know. But it could have been. The point is it could have been. If you want to make content like this happen, then join my Patreon and suggest stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself. And remember, if you like this reaction to these two musicians vibing, then please, would you consider subscribing? I mean, hello.